Welcome back to Sports Radio 95.9 The Fan. My name's Mark, and yes, this is the Mark Moses Show. Weekday afternoons from 3 to 6 p.m. Right now here on the Club 52 Hotline. Very nice man I met a couple days ago. He is the voice of the Miami Marlins for Fox Sports Florida. His name is Rich Waltz. Rich, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? How are things up on the Treasure Coast? Oh, they are doing just fine here on the Space and Treasure Coast. And I'm going to start with this. Are you ready for some baseball? We've had a long off season. Are you ready to get back in that grind of, of six straight months of Marlins baseball? You know, I am ready. I'm, I'm, I've been to spring training twice. Um, I've, I've just finished my college basketball schedule for uh, CBS, and I'm, uh, I'll be down here, uh, down at uh, Jupiter in about uh, five, six days. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm ready. It's, and, you know, the one thing, you, you, it is a grind. Um, but you can't look at it that way. You can't, you can't look down the calendar and say, I'm going to be working every day for the next six months. <laughs> what you've got to do is, is um, it's, I guess, a broadcaster's cliche, is, is take it one, one series at a time and, and enjoy it. You can't, and, and certainly last year was an extreme test of that. You have to enjoy the moment. You have to remind yourself, you know what? I'm getting paid to go to ball games, and that's pretty cool. And you have to do that every day. Um, you can't treat it like, oh, boy, this is a grind, and I can't wait for it to end and all that. It's, a, it's an honor, and it's a pleasure, and it's a, um, you know, you're fortunate to be working in Major League Baseball. So I am, I, and I think, uh, I think 2014 is going to be a much brighter year for Marlins fans. How do you prepare for a new season? I know you're talking spring training. You're doing college basketball there a second ago for CBS. But how do you get ready for a new season, especially with the Marlins made a lot of moves in the offseason? Well, it, I mean, there's two things. You're preparing uh, for your ball club. Uh, and the most important thing is, and if Tommy Hutton and I do this a lot, is get to spring training, uh, get to the workouts. You know, the games are not real consequential. Um, you get there in the mornings, you talk to uh, pitching coach, hitting coach, and then you talk to players around the cage, uh, out on the practice fields. You introduce yourself to the new players, uh, the Garrett Jones, the, the Casey McGee's, the, the Saltalamachias. Um, get to know them, their stories. Um, reacquaint yourselves with the guys that were here last year or some of the guys that are trying to make the club, the Reed mm. Johnsons and the, and, and the Ty Wigginton's uh, and such. Because for me, it's and you know I've I've got baseball prospectus and and you get all the preseason magazines and, and that's important too. But um, I think from your own ball club's point of view, the, the the first order of business is to get to know your players, their histories, what they're like. Um, find out from managers, coaches, strengths, weaknesses, uh, uh, and that moving forward. And then Tommy and I take a, a great pride in. Our, our preparation, and we treat uh, you know teams that are playing the Marlins. It's, it's it's very similar to when I do a national broadcast. Mm. Um, you have as much information as and as much uh, stuff prepared for the other team as you do for your team. Um, I think that's really important, um, especially in, in in Florida because there's Mets fans, uh, there's Phillies fans, there's National fans, there's Braves fans that all watch the telecast. Um, and and just our both of our styles, you treat the you know you treat both teams with uh, respect and and a great play by um, a Braves player is 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 a great play by a Braves player. Um, I mean, and Andleton Simmons stands on his head and makes a play in the hole. You take notice and stand up and 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 all of that, and I think that gives you credibility. I've always. I've always uh, subscribed to the to the theory that you're a you're a storyteller, and to tell the proper story and and especially to make it a good story. If uh, I mean you think about Jack and the Beanstalk, um, if if your team is Jack uh, and he's climbing the beanstalk, um, and you don't pay much respect or pay attention or um, talk about his opponent, which is you know, a giant, and not only a giant, but the meanest, baddest giant around. Well, when Jack goes up there and beats that giant, uh, that's a much better story than if Jack goes up to Beanstalk and there's just some opponent that, you know, nobody knows about, you don't talk about, and he beats him, and, and that's the end of the game. I mean, to me, I like the first story. And I yeah. Think it's a better story, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a much clearer picture and a, a truer story, and I think a fan appreciates that more. 
I like that. We're here with Rich Waltz, Miami Marlins play-by-play man for Fox Sports Florida. You can follow him on Twitter. It's a good one if you like baseball in the NL East and the Marlins. Rich Waltz. And I, we were talking about this off air. You know, the ballpark down there in South Florida, still only two, three years old. You get to go there every day. What are your thoughts on the new ballpark? I mean, I love it. I, I think it's amazing. I think it's unique. What are your thoughts on the ballpark? Yeah, it's, it's going to be year three, and it's uh, for us, it's just a terrific place to go to work, especially having endured you know, the seven years in a football facility, and Tommy even longer. Uh, to go to work there every night is a pleasure. And I think fans, for a lot of fans, especially up your way that haven't been down there yet, there's still a little bit of apprehension about coming down and parking and all that. When you go down there, you'll find out it's really easy. I mean, if you go to a, a heat game, Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably easier than that. Um, there's a lot more parking uh, involved. They've got the four parking structures around the ballpark. Uh, you can get in and out uh, very quickly. You can even go down on tri-rail. I know that you've uh, oh, yeah. done that yourself. You can go down on tri-rail uh, and get to the game. And once you're there, it's uh, the comfort uh, level and the amenities in that ballpark will, will blow you away if you haven't been there. Uh, it's the only retractable roof ballpark that has a clear view of that city's downtown. You know, all the other retractable domes or retractable ballparks, you can't really see out. But this one, you can because you've got that left field wall that retracts. And when it's rolled out, it's, it's essentially the rolling glass window. And you, that Miami skyline at night is a spectacular one. And you can see it from the ballpark, which is one of the cool things, but it's, I mean, it's air conditioned when the roof is, is closed. And there were many nights in April and some in, in September last year where they had the roof open and it was just gorgeous uh, there. So, you know, I'd, I'd encourage fans to give it a try. If you haven't been down there, you know, come to a game. Um, and if it's, if it's a ways to go, say it's a three or four hour drive down the coast, find a hotel and, and spend the weekend there. Um, I would suggest the Clevelander because they're they're uh-huh. in the ballpark and they're on South Beach and it's a great place. But if that's not your style, there's there's plenty of places to stay. Come down for a Friday night and a Saturday night and and see a couple ball games and 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 hang out in the art district or go to South Beach or um, or do some of the fun stuff in Miami during the day. Oh, you don't have to sell it to me. I'm already coming. I, I love it. I, the air conditioning's what got me. I, I love that comment. We're here with Rich Waltz, Miami Marlins play-by-play man on Fox Sports Florida. Let's talk about the team real quick. I want to get your thoughts on Mike Redman and the job he's done so far uh, developing these young guys, especially like Jose Fernandez and Gio Stan. I mean, what are your thoughts on the manager of the Marlins? Well, for Red, um, last year was a really tough year. I mean, he was saddled with a roster that wasn't complete, um, that was extremely young. And, you know, there were times last year where he he really couldn't manage because he didn't have bench players that were um, major league caliber in terms of, you know, pinch hitters. Um, So there were many games where he couldn't pinch hit, he couldn't make moves. Um, And, you know, I think he he did a nice job of of keeping it together, of, of... you know, developing the young players. I, I thought the, you know, the the rotation, obviously, with Fernandez, uh, Nathan Ivaldi, and certainly Henderson Alvarez at the end of the year, um, that's a real bright spot. And the bullpen was really good last year. Steve Ciszek continues to develop into one of the better closers in the game. Mm. Um, but the everyday roster last year, that you know, he had, you know, Redmond had to uh, to assimilate guys into the big leagues that had not been there and that were maybe there a little bit early earlier than you thought they would be. Christian Yelich made that jump quite well. Um, you know, guys like Marcelo Zuna and Jake Marisnik, I think, still are trying to figure it out. Um, that's a good battle in center field. The, the, you know, the, the best thing about spring training that I've seen so far in the days that I've been down there is the smile on Giancarlo Stanton's face. He's, he's engaged, um, not not literally engaged, but he's engaged in in and has ownership of of this team. He's he's into it. Last year was a, a really difficult year for him, I think, mentally and physically early. But mentally, you know, to have the just about the entire 2012 team uh, moved, and he being kind of the only guy left and really left unprotected in the lineup, that's tough on a young player. 
and you saw that in spring training on his face and, and his body language. There's none of that this spring training. You, he's, you know, uh, bubbly and, and the personality's coming out and he's having fun and, and that's a great sign. What about Jose Fernandez? You, you talked about Stan. When I go to the Marlins website, it's got Fernandez everywhere. This and guy, it should, yeah, and yeah. it should because he's look. Even in my travels of college basketball and um, around uh, the country this year, a lot of people come up to me and ask me about Jose Fernandez. Hmm. And say, is that kid for real? Um, is he as good as he looks? And what kind of guy is he? And the answers were yes, yes, yes. He's um, he he was just dominant last year. I mean, really, you look at the numbers and they're ridiculous. Uh, he was the best pitcher in the game from you know mid May on. Um, he was third in the Cy Young voting. Uh, you know, I don't think you can ask anything more of uh, uh, one of the youngest you know starters to have that type of success ever uh, to walk into the big leagues having not pitched a day over single A and and do what he did and. He's uh, it's, it's he's interesting uh, right now. Talking to him um, a couple weeks ago about his off season routine. You know, Orlando Chinea was the another Cuban defector, the, the pitching coach, um, also worked in Japan, who was his coach, uh, his personal coach, and took him under his wing um, when he got to Tampa as a 15 year old from Cuba. Hmm. And Chinea's training regimen is is not. Uh, not you know, not your normal regimen. His his stuff is a lot of pushing cars and rolling tires and working ropes and and he picked a lot of that up in Japan. And Fernandez bought into it as a 15 year old and still does it. Still does a lot of it. And the one thing he added this year, he got a, a really nice bike and he rode it and he rode it and he would ride, you know, 100 100 miles or so a day. Um, so he's lost some weight. Um, and his body looks, um, you know, a little more streamlined. Um, and he's excited. There's, there's, when you run into a player that talented and then are around him and find out how hard he works, what a competitor he is, what a nice guy he is. Um, it's really a cool thing. You, you, I think fans never got a chance to see the, the work that he did with kids hmm. in Miami, the groups of kids that he would have out to the ballpark. Uh, during the week, you know, three hours before the game, he's being followed around by 25 kids all over the field. And, you know, he doesn't talk about that, and, and nobody really shows it. But um, to see a kid that young be that mature in, in so many ways is uh, is a great sign. We're here with Rich Waltz, the Miami Marlins play-by-play man for Fox Sports Florida. And I'm going to end with this. I know you're a busy, man. This is a quick one for you. As a play-by-play man, how many times are we going to screw up Jared Sokolnik? I can't say it. I'm sorry. How, how, what's the over and under this season? People are going to screw it up. I, you know, he's a, he's a local kid. He's a Palm Beach kid, uh-huh. so I think, and, and obviously a World Series uh, winner and, and hero and all that for the Boston Red Sox. He had a great year last year, um, and I, I think people will be okay with it. Not a, it's not as tough a name to pronounce as Echeverria. <laughs> yeah, you're uh, right. That was a tough one for people to get through. And, you know, we got through the, you know, Giancarlo. Uh, so Salt Lamaki, I think people will, will do it. I think he still has the record for the most letters in a, in a last name in, in Major League history. There, there was some concern that the Marlins would sign um, uh, Arrua Barruena, the shortstop Ooh. out of out of Cuba, who I had in the World Baseball Classic in, um, in Japan, he, and the, the Dodgers signed him, actually. And so there's no, there won't be Echeverria to Arua Barruena to Saltalamaki or anything like that, um, which is a good thing. Yeah, it, it, a true professional. I, you make it sound so smooth. I love it. Rich Waltz, Miami Marlins play-by-play man for Fox Sports Florida. Give a follow on Twitter at Rich Waltz. Rich, appreciate your help. Hope I can get you on again, and we'll talk some NL East baseball with the Marlins. You know, any time during the season, just um, just call me. And, and to all the fans living up there, uh, thanks for watching. And, and we'd love to see you at, at the ballpark. And if not, uh, Tommy and I hope to keep you entertained uh, during the season.